Wait, are you wanna? Are you wanna? Um. That will be. Work right. harder, don't work quite as How come it's like this right now? Wasn't this last time? Just All right. Yeah. We're just waiting for a few more people to come in. Yeah. She's one of the fastest guys in the world. He's from St. Catherine. Are you one of the fastest guys in the world? In the world. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's kind of cool, eh? Yeah. Being one of the fastest guys in the world. <laughs> Here, I'll turn on the video. Are you going to come watch? <laughs> now she's embarrassed. <laughs> hey, John. Hello. How are we going? <laughs> All right, we'll get started. And so, welcome to another edition of Runversations. Thank you, Rowan, for joining us tonight on Zoom. Uh, again, if you don't know me, my name is Paul. I'm the, I run the social media platforms for the Niagara Falls International Marathon. Uh, in a moment, I will introduce you to our guest. And then again, if you have a question for him, uh, please just message me in the chat box and then I'll let you know when it's your turn to ask. Uh, when people are talking, if I can just ask if you can mute your audio so that we can hear, we can keep the background noise down. And when it's your turn to ask, I'll let you know. Uh, before we begin, I just do want to say uh, that I want to reiterate that this is a safe space and we want to make sure that everyone participating is respectful so that we can uh, enjoy and have a great evening. All right. Okay. So in saying that, I want to, I'm pleased to introduce our guest today for Runversations. Uh, he is a two-time Olympian, 2012 in London and 2016 in Rio, both in the 10,000 meters. In 2015, in the Pan Am Games in Toronto, he won the gold medal uh, in the 10,000 meters. And last year at the World Athletic Championships in Doha, he won a bronze medal in the 5,000 meters. Please give a warm welcome to Mohammed Ahmed. Mohammed, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Good, good. Everyone's doing good. Yeah. And so uh, before we get on to the, a lot of the running start, I just want to talk to you and ask you, you know, it's been an emotional few weeks for everyone, especially for our friends and family in the black community. You know, I want to check in with you and see how you are doing with all this and how, so, how the support is for you where you are. Um, you know, yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely been overwhelming and um, it's been, you know, a time where, you know, even if you wanted to kind of disconnect and uh, try and not, examine you know a lot of the videos and so you know the the overwhelming thing uh need just flooded media um and, and on, on tv screens even though if you wanted to like limit those it's hard not to you know like right. uh, it's, it's 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 difficult to do that because you know it's um because you know um um what 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 we see is, you know, it's already, it has been uh, extremely um, difficult times with immense amount of sadness. Everybody's in lockdown. Everybody's been, um, their, their sense of normal has been pretty much turned upside down. And, you know, we've had thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people that were with us uh, three, four or five months ago that aren't with us already, you know? So with that, it's already been, a lot of sadness and then to see what what transpired um it it makes it it makes it even that much more difficult it's a compounding effect and it's hard you know it's hard not to be overwhelmed it's hard uh uh not to you know be reflective and, and think about um the ways in which that you as an individual um you know fit into the society the way in which you uh, can have an impact within the society. So, um, yeah, for me, like I've, I've definitely been, um, you know, reflecting quite a lot. I've been sharing a lot of, a lot of my experiences. Um, a lot of people have been, you know, um, emailing me, calling me, texting me, um, you know, through social media and email and whatever, every format. 
and it's been it's been overwhelming honestly but you know i felt like i feel like i've i've been doing a good job of trying to like protect my space um talk to the to the right people um you know my family my friends uh um you know the people of color that are in my in my circle um you know my teammates um have been uh very helpful and supportive good and um you know yeah so i've just been trying to like try and do as much as i can and uh and also try and you know um yeah be reflective as well i feel like you know in this time the biggest things that we can do is yeah we can monetarily like help uh support groups and um that are working towards uh, these efforts. Um, and then also you gotta be, you know, educating yourself. You gotta, you know, um, um, you gotta share experiences and then also be reflective, you know? So I've really been doing that and yeah, th- you know, thank God for running. Running has helped quite a lot, so yeah. Good, well, I'm glad you're able to get the support that you need and I hope that you continue and everybody continues to get the support that we all need for this to make sure that everyone's okay. So thank yep, you. Absolutely. And yeah. So what has life been like for you during this whole time of COVID? I mean, you're obviously not being able to leave Utah, really. And so what has life been like for you? Yeah, so I spent, what was it, the first eight weeks of uh, lockdown in Portland. Um, and it was overwhelming. I mean, you know, it was sort of everything came at us like super quick. Right. Um, right. You know, uh, we were actually like we were in Woodland Park in January uh, when we got the first whiffs of uh, of coronavirus and COVID and, and this. And, you know, everybody thought it was a China problem, you know, like this is what everybody was thinking. And then all of a sudden, within three weeks, like it just it was a worldwide thing. And, um, it, right. you know, obviously decisions were being made for whether for travel for shutting down cities um for uh sporting uh, organizations are shutting down right. and it, everything just came at us so quick and it was quite overwhelming um but I, I, you know obviously once like all the decisions were made to cancel the the olympics for this year or postpone it for next year um and you know the reality was being in lockdown and uh trying to follow the directives that we were given um, by healthcare providers, um, you know, you just try and like do your best to follow that and try and do what you can and, you know, follow what you're allowed and what, what you're, you know, and not do what you're not allowed to do. And um, so we were in Portland for, for the first seven weeks and, um, um, you know, we kind of used running, you know what I'm saying, to try and like, um, you know, stay positive and stay and try and get in a routine um you know we couldn't work out in groups Mm. obviously and my group is pretty big um so what we did was we try and like you know uh split into like very very small groups of uh, individuals like uh, groups of like two um and sometimes and most most of our rounds we literally did it by ourselves and um you know we couldn't go to gym so we have to like try and get like some sort of equipment um uh, to try and do some core um at home um and uh yeah we tried to work together in small groups and uh we were we were just trying to communicate through zoom and, uh zoom and uh our group chats try and you know stay positive and try and motivate each other and um yeah so we did six weeks there and then and then we came up to uh utah for a little bit of altitude um utah is a little bit more open um right. Um, so, and it's, it's a small town, small mountain town, town anyway. So there isn't a lot of people. Um, so we're able to like, you know, get to like very wide and spacious uh, roads for, to do our runs. And uh, so we've been doing that for the last, uh, five weeks ish. Now this is five, uh, week five. And, um, yeah, we're just trying to like, try and get in a routine, you know, try and like right. stick with it and trying to do what we can. So good. Good. Uh, Zachary, you had a question? Zachary, you still there? I think he's frozen. All right, we'll go to Amar. Amar, you had a question, Amar? Uh, yes, I just wanted to find out, uh, is a two-part question, what age did you start running? And and basically, what got you into running? Yeah, um, 
Ooh, this is a, uh, this is, this is a bit long. Um, <laughs> so, you know, like my introduction to like running started in elementary school, um, track and field day. And, you know, I found out pretty quickly, like, you know, when I was grade five, grade six, like I was not a kid. Like, I think I still had a lot of growth to do. I was a bit lanky. I was a, um, you know, a, a lot of growing to do. So I wasn't one of the quickest people on, um, in my school, but I did like it. You know, I did like the sport and I was like, Oh, this is cool. And it so happened like within, I think that period, I think grade seven, it could have been like the, uh, the Olympics in 2004 Athens were happened during the summer. And that was the first time that I really got to like, see what running was, what, you know, what people do, the Olympics. And I was really extremely like, uh, inspired by that, which, Essentially, or oh shit. And just trying to get better. Um, and then once I got to like high school, I got introduced to like uh, training, they matured up a little bit. And it was really, I would say, uh, grade nine that I was like, okay, I like running. Um, I, I show, I showed a bit of, uh, um, ability for the sport and I had immense amount of guidance. I had really, really good individuals that steered me in the right direction and put me in the right, uh, environment, um, to hone my talent. And, um, yeah. And then since, uh, you know, since then, like, I just, it just kind of took off. I kind of slowly developed. I joined the Niagara Olympic Club. And through that, I was able to really fall in love with the sport, really uh, travel to meet um, outside of my hometown um, and really see what life was outside of my hometown and a uh, sense of perspective and, um, you know, really developed through, through training with the Niagara Olympic Club. And, um, yeah, I don't know, like slowly kind of figured out what, what, like what track and field was, you know what I'm saying? What the community was and what races were available out there. Um, and uh, so OFSA and um, OTFAs um, and, uh, you know, Canadian championships and through that, like developed and became one of the, you know, the top guys in Canada. And yeah, and then slowly went off to university and, you know, kind of developed from there. And uh, here I am. <laughs> and now you're doing amazing. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. Well, you actually hold five Canadian records, both indoors and outdoors. The 3,000, the 5,000 meters, and the 10,000 outdoors, and the 3,000 and the 5,000 meters indoors. What is it? How do you attribute your success to those those distances? I think. I think. Thing that I would attribute you know to my success is like slow development honestly like you know I wasn't great like I said like you know like I didn't really show pure abilities um very 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 young I was kind of raw I was still like developing uh, to my body um there's so much growth that I had to do but fortunately I had coaches that did, gave me the right right amount right amount of workouts right amount of training and I would say like slow development, honestly, like I wasn't, you know, a prodigy, you know, like I was, you know, somebody who showed ability, um, who really loved the challenge of just getting better. Um, and I really slowly like went through the various uh, developments, levels of development that I needed to. Um, and yeah, I don't know, like, I mean, just being in the right environments as well. I think that's like that, you know, like I had really good coaches in, in, in high school. I had a, a really good coach, um, in, uh, university. Um, and now I have a really good coach as a professional. So everything that I've done from the beginning to where I am now has been seamless. It's been a seamless transition. And I feel like the training has connected really well together, uh, throughout the various different levels. And I think that's probably, you know, the, yeah, that's probably what I would attribute my success to. Is there a lot of cross training? I think you touched on it a little bit already, but are you doing a lot of cross training right now? Um, aside from like gym, um, I don't I don't do any cross training to be honest. And 
Um, I think another thing I probably like attribute to my success is probably the lack of like extreme uh, injuries. Um, I've been right. relatively like very, very like healthy. Knock on um, and I think knock that's and uh, yeah, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, like I think that's probably the other thing is yeah, training. But like I was able to go through the various different levels of training without getting severely injured. And so, what is it that yeah. you love about racing? Um, I think what I love about it's just the ability to prove to myself, you know, how good I can be and how well I can compete against, you know, the best in the world or, you know, each country has to, has to offer. So that's probably, um, I'm, I'm, you know, naturally I'm a competitive person. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I really, really love and, you know, really get jazzed up for like big competitions. And the reason for that is like, I want to be, I want to, I want to say, okay, like, how good am I compared to the best Ethiopian, right. you know, the best Kenyan, right. the best Norwegian, <laughs> best European, America, like how good can I be? And um, so, yeah. Speaking of huge races, I want to take you back to uh, your race in Doha last year. I'm going to show the last two minutes of the race and then I want to come back to you and just talk to you about that, okay? Yeah. Two laps to go in the final of the 2019 men's 5,000 meters. Stella Monborega. The fourth fastest in history is on Philip Ingebrigtsen's shoulder. But it's Ahmed, the Canadian, who got his heel clipped there by Jakob Ingebrigtsen, who leads with 700 to go. Paul Chalimo, silver in Rio, bronze in London, has been a shadow on the shoulder of the leader for the entire race. The expatriated Kenyan, who's made a happy life in the United States, is in second place and there's pumping and barging going on. Jakob Ingebrigtsen got his heels clipped by Varega. It's understandable. This is the World Championship final. There's a huge amount at stake here. Philip Ingebrigtsen has stepped off the track. Maybe his role was to pace make Jakob Ingebrigtsen. Coming round now, with just over 400 to go. This is world-class distance running and there's another bump and barge between Ahmed and Jakob. They take the bow in the final of the men's 5,000 metres. Such heart, such passion. This is great racing. Their eyeballs out, hundreds of miles for years and years, just for this opportunity to shine on the global stage. Jakob Ingebrigtsen has got the bit between his teeth here. Idris, the defending champion, trying to find a way through. So too Varega. And the fourth fastest man in history is closing. Paul Chalimo is rocking and rolling for the first time. And so too is Ahmed. Jakob looks over his shoulder again. It's Jakob Ingebrigtsen. Salomon Varega. Roxar Idris, the defending champion. What a race. What a finishing prospect. Jakob's got to hang on because Ahmed of Canada's gone past him. Mukhtar Idris, from nowhere, with no form at all, is going to successfully defend his title. It's a one-two in glorious fashion for Ethiopia. Varega takes the silver, and what an incredible bronze medal for Mohamed Ahmed of Canada. Every time I see that video, I have to, I, I can't believe the amount of jockeying for position. I've never seen that type of, you know, fighting through in a race like that. And I remember I watching an interview of you and you said, people don't consider track and field the contact sport, but it really is. <laughs> right? and, so, yeah. and so when you were coming in through that last 500 meters, can you talk about that and how really, because you went from right, you know, in the lead back down to fifth, then fighting your way back to third. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, it was a brutal race. Uh, I felt like the last like three, <laughs> three laps or something like that. But, you know, in, in some ways, like, you know, you have to kind of prepare yourself for those things right. to happen. And for me, you know, I got, I think, clipped like at least five, six times in those three, in those, in those uh, three laps, last three laps. And every time I got clipped, you know, yeah, you, you kind of coil and you kind of get, attention and um uh, build up in your body but what i was telling myself was did i fall no i didn't okay i'm still on my feet keep going keep <laughs> going keep going and yeah. i think in many ways i was very very much like undeterred because um because of like how motivated i really was you know to to to, to fight for a medal to to deliver a podium finish uh, to go for the win 
I was extremely like that year, like, you know, 20, 2019, you know, going all the way back to like 20, uh, 2018, fall of 2018. That's when everything starts to build, build up to uh, the, the, the world championships or that summer and that winter, whatever it, it starts in, in the fall for us. And I remember just like, you know, examining everything that I needed to do and just kind of like saying, Hey, I need to, uh, you know, focus on these little things, you know, uh, the gym a little bit more, um, get getting better treatment, uh, trying to learn about my body and learning the various different weaknesses that I need to work on throughout the year. And I was able to like, you know, lay out a good foundation in the fall of 2018 right. Right. and then slowly build throughout the, that year, uh, the year. And it was a long, grueling year, like, because I started training, like I said, like fall of like October, 2018 and the world championships were you know october ended october of 2019 so it was like 12 months that's and a lot i'm telling you like yeah like i had very few days off honestly very very few days and i just like put layer a little bit a little bit a little bit and i felt like i arrived at the world championships at like my fittest mm -hmm. um and um I, you know knock on wood i wasn't injured i was fit i was able to go through all the various types of training that i needed to do to prepare myself for those. And I was like, it was almost like, okay, like rest easy in your mind. Like you have nothing to worry about. You've done everything you needed to do. You just have to like deliver. You just have to stick to a plan and just deliver. And I think like every time I got clipped, I was just like the plan, like just the plan <laughs> is to, to, you know, go for the gold, go for the gold. And, um, that's probably, you know, that's, yeah, that, that's what I was thinking throughout those, uh, throughout that run. And yeah, I was motivated. I, I really wanted it. You know, I had very, uh, a lot of close, uh, um, you know, uh, calls for, to, to be on the podium, you know, 2016, 2017, um, you know, 2018 was an off year. So there wasn't major world championships. But I felt like I put in a great uh, year of foundation of mileage, um, and I, I, you know, I finished. Uh, I got two silver medals at the Commonwealth Games, right. and you know, yeah, it was good. But like, it wasn't. I, I felt like there wasn't a lot of depth um, right. at the World Championships. I was like, okay, I competed with one of the best guys, Joshua Chuck, the guy in those events, and I was like, I know I can compete with these guys. It's just I just got a little bit of growth, a little bit more growth, and I felt like. I worked on some of the weaknesses and some of the, um, some of, you know, some of the missing, uh, uh, you know, uh, abilities that I needed to. And uh, yeah, you know, third, but, you know, hopefully I wish I, you know, won. I got, I wish I got silver, but, you know, there's years to come, hopefully. And um, yeah, it was a big uh, stepping stone. Oh, it was, a, it was a great race. And so um, I read somewhere you said the challenge is to show up every day with our entire being despite the many hardships and life baggage we carry. So you said that. So when you're getting ready for a race, what's the mental thinking that you go through just to keep focused? To get focused. Who that is, yeah, that is a, that's a good question. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, you get, you get the nervousness, the, the, the natural uh, body, the body's process is just getting nervous, getting anxious, you know, you go through all those things and, you know, I just tell myself to relax. Um, not too much. I just let, I tell myself to not worry about it. Let those things happen. Let the, you know, the, the, the nervousness, uh, because it's almost, I see it as like the body revving up its engine, right. you know, preparing, you know, to, for battle. That's what it's doing. Um, so the nervousness, I kind of, you know, embrace it. Um, you know, and I just, the one thing that I really focus on is just like the doubts, you know what I'm saying? You get a lot of doubts and, uh, you know, you don't want to second guess yourself. You want to just give your mind, you know, an assurance, you know, that, that you've done the right work, that, that you are able to like, you know, accomplish what you want to accomplish. And, um, it's all about just like laying out a, a plan, writing it down and sticking to it literally that's all i'm doing like you know the whole day leading up to it two days leading up to it i'm just like this is going to be the plan this is the things that i want to accomplish this is the goal um i write those things down and i just you know whenever i get you know in a in a state mental state of 
doubting myself and my ability and even my training and you know my preparation i just say do this thing you know like um like for example the night before i go like you know uh what do you want to accomplish you know and i write you know i say i want to i want to go for gold i want to win i want a podium that's the goal and then and i say the next question i ask myself is um how are you going to accomplish those things right and I write down like positive things, you know, like uh, um, showing up, um, you know, uh, believing in yourself, committing to the race plan, fighting, you know, like simple, positive uh, things like that. And I just literally like to stick to those things throughout the whole day and, uh, you know, the days leading up to it and just just for uh, assurance. So mental assurance. Awesome. Henry, you had a question? You're on mute. There we go. Keeping myself muted so I don't interrupt. But um, so obviously, with the Olympics being delayed, lots of people's plans are are put on hold. Um, and uh, I wonder whether that's changed your mind about participating. And uh, hopefully not. Um, but what has it done to your training? Um, it really didn't change, uh, the type of training, um, that we're doing. Um, we are going as hard as we would if the Olympics were in July <laughs> this mm -hmm. year. Um, you know, with so much uncertainty, with so much, um, time on our hands, um, you know, we, we didn't want to get too sloppy with, with things, you know, with training, you know, you don't want to let the days go away, you know, get away from you, like the months get away from you. So, you know, for us, like we have, you know, a good group, a good coach, and we've just kind of stuck to our coach's plan. And um, it's, the goal is 2021, you know, everything shifted. So you have to mentally shift. You can't think about the Olympics anymore. You have to kind of break down your days into today tomorrow you know this week this month like you gotta slowly you know the next four four months kind of in those kind of blocks and I felt like we've done a really really good job um you know there's so much uncertainty there's so much sadness all around us um and you know to try and you know be at home just yeah you are locked at home um but you do have to kind of somewhat like take care of yourself and um, try and create some sort of normalcy within uh, unnormal times. And um, for us, we tried and, you know, stick to, to, to some sort of routine, you know, hit some good hard workouts, try and, you know, get, we're, we're in altitude right now, so try and get in an altitude phase. So we're trying to do the various phases that we would do if everything was normal um, and in hopes that, we are developing, you know what I'm saying? And we are even getting better, at becoming better athletes for next year um, when everything becomes a little, you know, more normal, hopefully. And, uh, you know, and just trying to, you know, within all the sadness, like try and, you know, keep sane in some way, you know, try and like keep ourselves together in some way. And, you know, for us, like running is part of our identity and it is, it is, it is our job and we have to try and go out there and, and try and do it. Um, you know, quarantine living is essentially what runners, like a professional runner um, in, in our group, uh, especially like kind of lives, you know, we go out when we are absolutely like need to, you know, grocery store, uh, go for a run, um, you know, twice, uh, once, twice a day. Um, but then other than that, we're just at home, like hanging out, like just like, you know, sitting on our butts. So um <laughs> Not a lot has changed for us in that regard, but obviously the competitive vacuum, the, you know what I'm saying, the uncertainty, when will we be able, when will be, when, when are we able to race again, um, you know, and try and deal with all the sadness, you know what I'm saying, mentally uh, and everything, so, yeah. Thank you, Henry. Zachary, you had a question? Yeah, I had two, sure. if that's all right. Sure. Well, uh, my first question is, You've uh, been running for quite a while, and you've probably seen a few champion runners come and go in your time. I was wondering if there's any particular one you wish you could 
you know, race against. Just you. Yeah, um, man, I wish, obviously, you know, a person that I looked up to growing up was uh, Kenanisa Bekele. And, you know, I got to race against him in 2012, but, you know, it wasn't the Bekele of, you know, that I knew, you know, he was sort of uh, towards, you know, the tail end of his career, um, you know. And also, I obviously was like just kind of beginning. That was my first Olympics and uh, first major senior team. Um, so we were at a, two different uh, points. So I did get to race against him, but I wish um, I got to race against him at my best and at his best. Um, and, uh, you know, a person that I wish also, like, I mean, I did also race against this guy, uh, Mo Farah, um, 2012, 2013, 2015, 2016, 17. So all those years I ran against him, but he was at his best, you know, or at least at the top. Um, in some of those years and uh, I mean, I, most of those years and but I wasn't at my best and I wish I was able to race against him at my best and his best as well so those are two individuals that I wish I, I ran against um, now um, and um, yeah yeah those two individuals um, yeah but all the greats obviously you, you know you wish you can you can running against all the greats I think you know just because you want to compare yourself like um it would be really nice to know yeah I beat him you know once you know and uh for me I think like the fact that I was never able to be like Mo Farah despite believing that I could even though I wasn't ready in the years that I ran against him um you know the fact that I didn't beat him just kind of I'm like "Ah, it would have been nice it would have been nice you know (laughs) to, to, to get him yeah your time will come, Mohammed. I know it will. So, yeah. Zachary, you had a yeah. question. I think he's frozen again. Yeah. I was wondering if I could ask you for an autograph. Yeah, for cool. sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't have a lot of like uh, like cards with me that I and I usually don't mail or anything like that. But maybe, maybe I can try and like figure something together. Um, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I'll probably like when I come back to St. Catharines, maybe we can like organize the run and, and something like that and we can, we can try something. That'd be maybe. great. Yeah, Don't go a little slow for us, okay? For sure, for sure. We can do that. <laughs> Amar, you had a question? Uh, yes. And by the way, thank you so much for coming here. Uh, I have two part question again. Uh, one is how many miles do you run per week? And what's your strategy when you're running, especially you're going so fast, like when you get tired, like what are some of the things that you think about like uh, just overcoming that? Yeah. Um, what was the f- uh, first question? Um, oh, sorry. How much mileage? How much yes. mileage? Yeah. The first, yeah, mileage. Um, right now I'm running anywhere between like 90 to 100 miles uh, a week. Um, you know, um, it varies obviously like I, I try and do it like slowly throughout like when I take my break like I'm taking I'm running very little and slowly um you know throughout the weeks I'm, I build up um to like normal mileage so like for example this year like I was running about 100 miles towards January um started my base phase end of uh end of November so November December I kind of work my way up uh, 80s 90s and then by january middle of january i was running 100 miles um and then one of the well, how do i deal with um when i'm tired um hmm, you know that is a very very uh interesting question because um you know i try and not acknowledge that i'm tired in a race um i try and say nope i'm not tired i'm not tired i could do it um but obviously, like, you know, your, your form breaks down, you know, you do, you know, the fatigue really sets in, your legs, you know, give out. Um, but what you do is what I try and do in those, uh, hopefully I try and not have those, you know. I try and, like, prepare as well as I can to not have those. Um, but it's mental cues, like, you know, um, you know, and usually most of them are, like, the things that I laid out, you know, in my plan, you know. It's like medals medals like what what motivates you you know what i'm saying like what are what is the goal right and 
yeah, you can, you might be fatigued, you might be tired, but you you probably are able to like get to your goal still. Um, and I try and like, you know, get motivated by that. And then, you know, I try and break things down, you know, like for example, if I start, you know, legs start buckling like eight laps to go, you know, I say, okay, one lap, you know what I'm saying? One lap, one, another lap, another lap, another lap. So try and break down in workable parts, slow it down, you know, just say, okay, let's get through this one lap. And if you can't, if, if it becomes that, if that becomes difficult, you try and do it in hundred meter segments. So, okay. hundred meters. Okay. That, you know, like if that's good, like, okay, maybe next 200 meters, 200 meters or something like that. So try and like, I try and like break things down into simple workable parts. So that's really compartmentalizing each part as you go along. Right. So, yep, absolutely. Awesome. So uh, what advice would you give somebody who's just starting to run? Um, I would say don't rush. Um, that's probably, you know, where people get themselves is, you know, you, they want to do too much too soon. And I'd say, don't do that, you know, just slowly build, you know, um, the goal is, uh, to run a marathon, like, you know, like marathons a lot. Yeah. You do need to, it requires a lot of mileage and a lot of time on your feet, but you know, sl it's slowly start, you know what I mean? Like if you, if you've never run before, um, run for, start with a walk, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like try and like start with a walk and, and then start doing like walk jog and then, you know what I'm saying? And then run 15 minutes or whatever you consistently, um, you know, just try and like, you know, uh, build up slowly and really, cause you don't want to like lose the running isn't super fun. It can, it can become fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, so just, you know, you don't want to take zap all the joy out of it. So, right. you know, make it as, uh, as fun as possible. Don't rush too much. Don't do too much too soon. And yeah, go from there. Jonathan, you had a question? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for doing this, Mohammed. It's really cool to hear from you. Uh, no yeah. Question for you. So if you're running like an elite level race, how much of your race would you say is kind of pre-planned? Um, and how much of it is kind of determined on how the race is going with your competitors? Um, yeah. So obviously in any race, I try and like come, come up with a, with a plan. Um, I try and like know, uh, my competitors and try and like learn, um, some of the habits that they do. Um, but at the end of the day, like, yeah, you, you want to, you want to have that plan, but you do, you don't want it to be so rigid. You know what I'm saying? That all of a sudden, like, you know, when you, when you like, when the race, for example, completely shifts and it's not the way that you saw it happening or, um, you know, that you, you like all of a sudden that creates panic in you. Right. So you want to, want to, you want to have a plan that is so rigid that you can't, you know, that, that you can't change it in on the fly. You know what I'm saying? You want to have an open plan as well. Open plan. That's what I mean. Um, so, and then you got to like, I try and read the race. Like it's about reading the race and those, you know, it's, at the international level, it be, it it's, it becomes difficult. Like for example, like a few years back, um, you know, I mustered, I, I worked my way up to like get into the point of believing that I can hang with these guys, that I can run with these guys, that I can run along along these guys. So that was one hard hurdle that I had to go through. Once I did that, it was like okay, the next year it was like okay, how do you like try and like out sprint them? How do you like you know I, I try and beat them? You know what I'm saying? And then that was another a layer um of reading the race um and then you know another race another way is like um you know over the last couple of years i've become more comfortable um running in the pack so i'm able to like read out splits i know splits whereas for, for five, i couldn't do that it was just like too much mental energy that it was taken from me um if i tried and like focus on all those things you know and now i think you know i've become i'm, I'm stronger i'm more experienced so I'm able to like, you know, add up the various different variables to read a race. You know what I'm saying? Like, how fast is it? Like, are we slowing down? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, is it, is the, is the pack bun bunching a little bit? Like you look for those little habits, you know what I'm saying? Who's looking good. You know what I'm saying? You try and read uh, running postures, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Can you talk about how you approach your nutrition with regards to your running? Yes. Um, I try and, uh, you know, consistency and moderation. That's, that's all I, you know, look for. Um, 
Um, obviously, you know, I, I felt like I've been around a lot of like incredible individuals, um, very accomplished people. So, you know, by being around those individuals, I was able to like, you know, take away some of their uh, habits, you know, their eating habits and, you know, the types of meals that they, they make. Um, so, um, yeah, I try and like consistency, balance, like, you know, variety of, of different foods, um, you know, yeah, it's like that, like smoothies, um, yeah, and like eat, eat a lot. I mean, for me, like, you know, I'm learning so much that, um, you know, I, I try and eat as much as I can, you know, um, Is there so, any... and, and ver... sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Variety, variety of, 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 uh, of foods, you know, variety, like, you know, um, so yeah, that's what I go for. Is there anything that you're going to like pre-race? That's your go-to? Pre-race. Yeah. Race is kind of, yeah. Um, hmm. It's kind of interesting because, you know, we're at like, you know, at Diamond League races and, you know, it's like buffet style food. So it's, you're just essentially given, you know, what, you, what, you know, what you're given is what you have, you know, to choose from. So by, for me, like one of the reasons why I try and like create um, a lot of, try and eat a lot of different diets and a lot of different, ex introduce myself or expose myself to a lot of different foods is when I go to a scenario like that, where I'm forced to pick between various different things that I'm, I don't freak out. I'm like, oh man, like I'm not, I'm not eating what I'm used to, you know? Um, but usually, you know, it could be, it could be sandwiches is probably a, a good little, like, um, good meal before, uh, most of the races, uh, the world championships, Olympics, family races are like super late, like eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. So I try and eat like, you know, in the morning, like, you know, oatmeal is probably something that I, that, that I, that I like oatmeal or, or, uh, with fruit and yogurt and, um, um yeah fruit and stuff like that uh is usually a typical like uh, morning um uh, breakfast um and then like i try and do like a little bit of a snack uh you know some some chicken some you know maybe a, some salad uh you know like salad bowl with uh, meat or something like that uh, with rice or something like that um and then four or five hours before the race four hours typically i eat try and eat like a bigger meal um it can be anything. Sometimes it's, it's a big bowl, like a, like a salad um, with uh, lots of greens, vegetables, um, protein. Um, uh, yeah, like rice or something like that or, or, or a sandwich, you know, some sort of sandwich, you know. Um, if not, if it's just like if I can just get like some a little bit of chicken, a bit of rice. Um, a little bit of green, that's good too, you know? So I try and like something that I can digest with him, but I give myself like four hours before, you know what I'm saying? Such that I can eat whatever I want. And uh, throughout those four hours, I can, uh, you know, my body digests. So, yeah. And so what would be some of your best running tips to get faster? To get faster? Hmm. I think it's just consistency. Like everything is about consistency, you know? With diet, you have to be consistent, you know, with it, you know. Um, if you eat the same thing every single day, like, that's not good. You know, you got to create a um, variety of different meals that you can eat and you stay, stay with it, you know what I'm saying? A diet is, a, is successful because you stick with it. And running is the same thing, you know what I'm saying? If you can, you know, like, get your mileage in and, and you slowly build and you dedicate yourself you will, you know, you will, um, and you put in the like hard miles and, um, effort like uh, day in and day out, you will, you will, you know, uh, obtain some of the goals that you set out for yourself. So it's just sticking with a routine, um, uh, you know, and, 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 and running more, you know what I'm saying? I think that's probably, you know, the, the one way that you can get, get, get faster is by running, you know? Um, getting out the door and running consistently, you know, you can't just do it. You can't get better in a week, in a month, you know, it's four months, five months, you know, it's a, a year, two years, five years. So, yeah. And who inspires you to push your limits? 
who inspires me? Um, I think I look back on, you know, the accomplishments of, you know, my competitors for sure. If somebody that I'm competing against, like runs a super fast time, I'm, I'm inspired by that. You know, um, I'm like, Oh man, he ran this. Okay. All right. Let's see if I can run, you know, uh, you know, match him or run quicker than him. Um, and, um, you know, yeah, for sure. The people that I looked up to back in the day, you know, the marks that they laid, um, inspires me. Um, but more than anything, it's just the, it's, you know, living on my dream. Like I'm, I am living my dream. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm around an incredible group of individuals and, uh, you know, that, that, that are highly motivated. So, you know, I live in a very, uh, motivating environment you know, or I'm around that. Um, so I'm inspired by that. And then my goals, you know, my goals quite, you know, inspire me quite a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, the fact that I, you know, childhood dreams, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, the young uh, me, you know, that, you know, at, what was it like as a 12 year old or a 13 year old watched the Olympics and said, Oh man, I want to go there one day. That inspires me. Right. So, yeah. And, you know, like it's, yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, I am living my dreams and, I am pretty close to, you know, some of my childhood dreams. So that really motivates me. It's, you know, the motivation is internal and, um, you know, I feel like I'm close and, you know, I'm having a lot of fun with it and yeah. Good for you. Good for you. And so how important a role is your faith? How does that help you in your training and in your races as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, my faith is, uh, like, yeah, definitely like, you know, belief in God, is is good so I'm, i am a, a believer um and i don't know it kind of centers me a little bit you know what i mean like it's it's been part of my life you know my whole life obviously as as i've gotten uh to you know have a lot of different experiences and uh, be exposed to a lot of different people you know my my mind has grown you know what i'm saying like i i i have a lot of different you know uh thinking and uh, knowledge that I've acquired over the years. Um, but, but yeah, my faith definitely centers me. Um, it, it grounds me in some way. Um, it kind of structures, you know, like, you know, throughout the day, I have to pray five times a day. So I, yeah, it's something that I, it's like, a, you know, five, five, 10 minutes, like um, times five throughout the day. Like I just like, you know, center myself and, um, it's meditation really like it's you know it's like meditating it's almost like a run you know it's the same kind of feeling you know that's when i'm praying and, that's a great yeah analogy. yeah so four or five you know like yeah five minutes uh times five throughout the day and um yeah you know and, and more than anything it's it's something it's for me like i don't try and like um i don't know like yeah for me like i just it's something that gives me um, uh, makes me feel good. Um, it gives me a bit of energy and I, I keep it, you know, and I've, I've kept it over, over the, all these years, you know, so. Awesome. All right. We're coming close to our end. Every time we do a run conversation with our guests, we do a quick ask the guests these Zoom questions, which are one or two or three answers from you. And then we'll just go through them and then just answer away. Okay. I'm going right. to spotlight your video. All right, question one. Canadian winters, love or hate them? We kind of touched base on this, but love or hate them? Uh, now I would say um, I hate winters. <laughs> I hate winters. <laughs> when I was younger, I loved them. <laughs> uh, favorite distance and why? Um, I think 5K. Um, I love how you can you know, be running on the edge or redlining from from the beginning you know um and each lap you're you're almost asking yourself like can you make it yeah. you know so yeah uh what are two or three words that those close to you would describe you as Ooh. um i think patient i hope it, patient <laughs> yeah any other words uh another one probably calm um i hope i hope i'm helpful right. um i'm hope i hope uh you know 
I give good advice. Yeah, I hope I'm I'm there for people, supportive, you know. So yeah. Apart from running, what are your other passions? Um, I like writing. I like reading. Um, I I, you know, I do want to get better at those uh um, you know, those as well. But yeah, I I like both of those things. You used to translate Somali poetry, correct? Yep, I did. Yeah, I got into it uh, when I was in uh, university. Yeah. Um, yeah, I came across like a few translated uh, Somali works and um, I kind of got inspired by that. And, uh, you know, I come from like very uh, poetic family. My grandma was like a big poet. Um, you know, a couple of my uncles are like, you know, uh, you know, uh, big poets like Adam Tarabi, who's um, who's he's probably one of the biggest poets in Somali history, and he's he's one of my uncles. Uh, my mom has composed, uh, you know, can just out of, you know, spontaneously can just like uh, compose uh, Somali poetry. So I grew up in like poetry and, and everything like that, and I kind of attempted it, and uh, I actually it wasn't bad, it wasn't horrible. So, yeah. <laughs> Anything you want to share quickly? Man, I haven't done in a while. Um, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would have to like, you know, I haven't, I haven't like translated in quite some time. Um, so a lot of the stuff that I translated is already, um, yeah, it's like in files and, and stuff like that. And I can't read it off the top of my head. Yep. <laughs> so it's not available for me right now. Poetry is a big thing in the Somali culture, right? It's very ingrained in the culture, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Ver like it's an oral uh, tradition. Um, you know, Somali was written for the first time um, in, what was it, like uh, in the 70s. Mm -hmm. So everything was just oral, right? So um, through, you know, it's a very nomadic culture too. So um, a way of transmitting uh, messages and information was through uh, poetry, right? Because you can memorize it quicker. Um, you can, um, yeah, you can, yeah, you can, you can do it like decipher it in a code, right. um, almost like poetry can be code because the meaning, what is the meaning? You know what I'm saying is meaning can be taken in various different ways. Right. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah. Very, like, you know, like, uh, you know, I think it was a, like a British explorer, like that had, uh, um, Richard Brighton or something like that. I don't know. Uh, you might have to like, uh, correct me on that. Um, but like, you know, he, when he came in contact with the Somalis, you know, he called them, you know, the nation of poets uh, mm -hmm. because of their love for poetry. And, you know, poetry is like food. It's, it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like food. So. Awesome. Best piece of running advice you've ever had? Um, hmm, I've had so many, um, but, you know, like my high school coaches, uh, you know, always told me from the beginning, you know, believe in yourself, believe in your training, uh, believe in your coaches. And, um, I, and I've always like, I stuck with that, you know, throughout the various different stages of development that I've gone through. It's always been a constant uh, reminder for me and, and, and words that I'd use. So. Cool. Two or three people dead or alive who you'd want to have dinner with. Oh, this is very good. <laughs> um, uh, my grandma, um yeah she passed away in 2006 um so my grandma um this is very very good maya angelo very good one uh um and then and obama would be pretty cool yeah that would be quite the conversation round table there <laughs> <laughs> For sure, for sure, yeah. Finish the sentence. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a blank when I grow up. Olympic gold medalist. Nice, <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. If you could be any superhero, who would it be? Um, Superman, probably. Yeah. You like all his power? Yeah. <laughs> I do, yeah, yeah. Um, what is the favorite thing about your career? What is my favorite thing? who you know it's interesting like i mean i'm i'm definitely proud of myself um of how 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 far i've come and you know the various different you know hurdles that i've that i've been able to overcome and i think that's probably what i'm what i'm like most proud of is you know how much growth that i've uh you know uh, I, um how much growth that i've shown 
over the last several years. And I'm telling you, like, it wasn't easy. There's so many times where I was like, I don't think I can make it. And somehow I was able to make it. And, um, you know, a lot of my accomplishments, I try and like forget it as quickly as I can because I want to, you know, get to the next one. You know, in some ways I, I, I feel like, you know, I'm in a rush a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like age is, is a factor. Um, so I try and like a lot of my accomplishments, I try and not like think about them. Um, I try and like, you know, you know, celebrate them when I, when they happen, but not to, you know, keep going back to them. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to be content, you know? So, yeah. So you once said, quote unquote, eventually I want to be the best in the world. True or false? Will that happen? I hope so. I hope so. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Um, you know, those are, I, I said those things, uh, said the, those words uh, to motivate me probably to put the pressure on myself. Right. Um, and, you know, there's no way of knowing, you know, what you can and you can't, what you can and cannot accomplish. Right. Um, it's, you know, the only thing that you can do is put forth the effort and um, try, you know, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm having a lot of fun trying. Awesome. So, so what's up next for Mo Speed? Just lots of training, lots of training, um, trying to grow, you know, trying to grow um, as an individual as much as I can, uh, you know, on the, on the track and off the track, you know, just try and, you know, grow and try and, you know, uh, better myself. Well, Mo, on behalf of all of us here, we really appreciate you joining us tonight. We really appreciate the time you took to answer the questions and to give us some great advice and to give us some great perspective of the journey that you've gone through. So we really appreciate that. Absolutely. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. Good luck. I appreciate uh, being here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thank Absolutely. you so Take much. Take care. Take care, everybody. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Yep. Bye. Yep. Thank awesome. you. Take care. Yep, no worries. <laughs> awesome. Okay.